Why, hello, and welcome to another episode of Walking. I'm your host, Eugene Lenning. I'm also the co-founder of Sea Heart Press. And as I was walking over here today to this beautiful meadow in Cheyenne Canyon, I was reflecting on two particular things. Number one, the unbelievable patience of Jesus with me, who is a deeply fallible person. And two, the reason for that feeling, the fact that I'm at the tail end of one of those days. And I bet you can relate. I woke up this morning with a set of tasks that I needed to do, and I set out on them with all kinds of perseverance and excitement, and not one of them seemed to go right today. Just one thing after another felt deeply frustrating, like I was struggling through the muck and the mire trying to get it done, in the midst of which a phone call came that was kind of not the phone call I wanted it to be, after which I made the ultimate disastrous mistake of just checking and seeing what's going on in the news today. Tragic error. So I wonder if you know what I'm talking about. Perhaps, in fact, you're having one of those days. Maybe it was yesterday, might be tomorrow. When we are in the middle of going about this thing, work, and yet we also feel that pull and, and, and that push of our family life, say. Or maybe you're praying that you would meet someone. Or you feel like you have these hobbies that your heart is just set free in, and yet you can never get to them because you're so hard at work. Well. Today, I wanna to talk about work. And we have talked for three weeks in a row about John chapter one, so I'm going to slightly move past that, but to remind you, John chapter one, we see those first two disciples. They get told by John the Baptist, go follow that man. They follow Jesus. Jesus turns and says, what do you want? And Peter shows up. He's given a new name. The next day, they meet Philip, who then goes running and gets Nathaniel. Nathaniel comes back with a cynical voice and Jesus sets his heart on fire by knowing everything about him. Well, now I wanna get imaginative even beyond that scene. Because let's imagine those few men sitting with Jesus perhaps even that evening. And as we see throughout the gospels, Jesus would break bread after giving thanks. So let's imagine for a moment Jesus putting his head back as he concentrates his whole heart on the Father. His shoulders kind of rest. And then he spreads his hands on the table, palm up, open, ready to receive, ready to surrender. Well, friends, what if you'd been sitting there? What if you'd been one of those people sitting at table and you happen to just look down for a moment at those hands? They're gnarled. His fingers look like they've been jammed and cut. They're calloused. They're rough. And I wonder when it was in the beginning of their discipleship that those disciples looked at Jesus, maybe it was that night, and said, by the way, Rabbi, what is it you've done until now? And he smiles and looks at them and says, well, I followed my father into carpentry. So that's what I've been doing since I was a teen. Imagine that moment for the disciples, for those fishermen, for those who had been zealots, eventually Matthew, a tax collector, those who knew the day in and day out of the 40, 50, 60, 70 hour work week and are exhausted. Imagine them looking into the eyes of this absolutely supernaturally gifted teacher, this rabbi, and realizing that just a few weeks ago he was taking an order on a banqueting table, that he was planing the boards, that he was joining in at the edges, that he was dealing with frustrated customers, that perhaps he was behind on a deadline. Think about those hands. And now think about this. On a day like today for me, maybe for you, when we feel like that was not a good one, I want you to remember the fact that Jesus absolutely understands what it is to need your daily bread. He knows what it takes. He knows what it was like to earn it. Don't forget the fact that perhaps if you're looking for employment, he knew what it was to need a next job, to have just finished, say, that banqueting table and be ready to frame a house, but there's no customers in line. He knows what it's like when you desire to excel when you want people to notice 
and to say, hey, that was great work, but maybe they don't. He knows what it's like to feel the satisfaction of, yeah, I did do it right. I did do well. He understands that part of us. So no matter where your work life is today, what I want you to do before perhaps you fall asleep tonight is to just close your eyes and look down at those hands of his. Those hands that say he had done more than a decade's worth of day in and day out difficult labor. And I want you to talk to him about it, to say, Jesus, as I walk with you Monday through Friday, would you walk with me? Would you show me how to walk into that meeting? Would you show me how to deal with this invoice? Would you help me to know where the next client is going to come from? Because Jesus, you know what that's like. Doesn't that bring peace at the end of a that sort of day? day? It certainly does for me. So friends, thanks for taking a walk with me today. Thanks for imagining his hands. And thanks for being the kind of friends who want to fall in love with him more every single day. I pray that whether today was a good one, that tomorrow would be a great one working with him. Again, thanks for watching.